Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Hebrew Jamaican Cooley. It is great to see everybody again. Don't forget, if you really like my content and you'd like to see more, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, share the video with others as well. And also, you know what? Hit the notification because every time I drop a video, you will be the first to know. You see me? Anyway. <laughs> Today's quick topic is Who the F did I marry? It seems to be a very I don't know It's like my wife kind of was telling me about it And then we were watching it from like Saturday night And the last night And I was like Huh, that is like uh. So here Here's what I'm going to do though. My wife and I plan to do a live stream of it tonight. And I hope you guys tune in. I'm, I'm still figuring out. I did my very first live, live stream on my gaming channel today. And my internet went. And I'm still sticking with that we are going through cyber attack. In America. Um... Anyway, listen, in looking at that situation with that woman, she plays herself off as the victim, but my wife and I clearly saw instances in which she was clearly lying about a lot of things. And a lot of things that was going on in that situation, you could, you could clearly see. She put herself in it. There are points in time in, in, in her videos she's not holding herself accountable for certain things that we, we really and truly saw that she was doing. You understand? There are really and truly there were videos, there were videos like some, some of the videos that we watched and I looked at it and I said, I said, babe, she lying, you know? She lying. And my wife said, yeah, she is. She is lying. And then there are certain points where she didn't agree with me. She's like, no, man. She thinks she's telling the truth. I'm like, no. She's lying. She's lying. You understand? So, in any case, people, look out for the video. And I think it's a, it's a, serious, it's a serious problem within the black community with those types of women. How they look and, and I'm going to be straight up I'm going to be straight up with you We pedestalize Women in general And I'm not just talking about black women Women in general have been pedestalized Into Godhood We've idolized women That don't even Deserve certain praises Rewards They haven't earned any of that And we're praising them for it so there's a lot of women that have now grown up with this mentality that I deserve certain things that I don't even work for. Or I deserve certain things that I don't even fit the criteria for. Now, when I watched the first couple of videos, here's what I noticed. She was talking about how this guy, when she met him, he hit all the boxes of what she was looking for in a man right and the first question I turned to my wife and I said does she meet any of his criteria does she look the way that he wants her to look did she catfish him because you see the, the truth of the matter is women of a robust size like that I don't care what you want to say. They are not pulling these types of men with ease. We need to stop filling their heads with this foolishness that they are, you know, them just exist. And these types of men are just going to be crawling all over them. There were videos where she talked about, where she talked about not wanting to be alone. So that's why she stayed with such a man. It's not just about not wanting to be alone. But she's basically thinking to herself. 
How in the world is she going to pull a man like this? That fit all her boxes in terms of looks and whatever it else. Because there are certain things that I cannot say on YouTube. But you understand what I'm saying? The man fit her criteria with a lot of things, but she didn't fit none of his criteria. Which is why he did what, which is why I believe he did what he did in the videos. And like I said before, there, there's a lot of things that I know. I look at it and a lot of things wasn't adding up. A lot of the things that she was saying or a lot of things that she was saying in the video was not adding up. And I was like, yo babe, this don't add up. That don't make no rotted sense. You understand me I say? A lot of the things in the videos that she was saying does not make any sense. It did not add up. Even when she tried to continue it in the next video, it didn't add up. It just didn't make any sense. You understand? So, it kind of showed the type of person that she was as well. She wanted to paint herself as a victim 100%. But it went to show you that she's she's also a huge liar too. You understand? Like a lot of women are not going to see that because they're already going into the video biased against the man that the woman is talking about. But they're not looking at like they're not pennying. They're not thinking about the things that she's saying. They're not really breaking down the whole entire situation. And how this woman found herself in the situation that she's in. You understand what I'm saying? So. You know. She made herself out to be the victim. And. Really and truly. If this man really and truly did what she said he did. She is a victim. But there are parts of her story that is extremely sketchy. There's parts of her story that don't add up. And there's parts of her story that she is clearly lying. She's clearly lying about it. You understand? She's clearly lying about a lot of the things in her story. Because like I said before... Like, if you really sit down and, and, and listen to what she's saying and certain things that she was believing in, you'd look at her and say, that's bullshit. You're lying. You're, you're absolutely lying. Anyway, people, I don't want to give too much away because my wife and I are going to do this live stream around 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock tonight. So after we put the kids to bed, after we put the children and them to bed, and thing we're gonna come back downstairs sit down in the couch and and we're going to do a live stream of this like maybe three hours live stream where we also give our input as a married couple about the things that we believe that she did wrong and because we looked at it and there were things that my wife did not me well me too there are things that my wife did and i did that were absolutely you know red flags that we shouldn't have done in terms of decision making. And you know. We both said that we both got blessed with each other. Because you know. The way it turned out. The way it did. We got blessed with each other. Because it could have gone down the same path. It could have gone down the same path. That you know. Her story went down. You know what I mean. And the thing about it is that. I, I told my wife, I was terrified of you when I first met you. No matter how nice you were to me, no matter how beautiful you were when we first met, I was terrified of you. And I was terrified because I did not want to be kicked out of a home that I was paying for. And that's one of the things I told her. Like, like and, and let me just be straight up with you. When I met my wife, I was actually still living with my ex. But my ex and I had decided that, you know, we're not together or anything like that. We're not doing anything and we're going to go our separate ways. But we shared an apartment together. And on the day that my wife and I were supposed to have our first 
did our very first meet up. My ex and I had an argument. And this argument actually stemmed from her having problems with the guy that she was seeing. And I could tell. I could tell. And I told her that, yo, just because you are going through problems with the guy that you're seeing, don't try to make problems with me because I'm not doing anything. You know, I paid my rent and all them things. I paid my half of the rent. I paid the light, whatever it is. You see me? And my ex basically, she took my keys. She picked up my keys. And she went over to the balcony to throw my key downstairs. And I've told this story many, many times in terms of like talking about my abusive ex. And, you know, I took up her keys, which had her car keys on it. And I did the same thing. I walked over to the next side of the balcony. Right. I walked over to the next side of the balcony. And I basically like put her keys over and say, yo, you drop my keys. I'm going to drop your keys as well. You understand? So, this simp from next door. And I know this guy was watching my ex from a long time. Because from day one, from we moving, this guy was so freaking nosy. You see me? This guy was so freaking nosy. Right? Every minute, every minute he was like talking up to us and talking up to my woman when I wasn't there. You see me? Old guy, no, old fella. I was like, and I was like, and she knew he liked her, and I knew he liked her, but I didn't pay it no mind, because I know, say, yo, she, like, if she give him something, like, she would just really be the bottom of the barrel if she did that. You understand what I'm saying? I had that much faith in my ex to say, yo, my ex is not, like, that type of person to be loose enough to just, like, be throwing it out to every and everybody. Right? I gave her that amount of respect. So, this dude comes out of his apartment and because our balconies are connected, right? He starts to look at me and talk about how he's going to call the police. And if the police come here, them not go, them not go, them not go, um, they're not going to arrest her, they're going to arrest me. Now, me being fearful of that, you understand, because I was out of status. You understand? I was an, an illegal at the time. I was like, yo. And she was like kind of even hinting at stuff like that. She's like, yeah, you know, you can't get in any trouble, you know. And I'm like, you little bitch. You little bitch. You understand? So, basically now, what happened is that now, because this guy now, and he kept like, and he stepped in front of me now. He stepped in front of me. Till I look at him and I was like, dude, what, what, what exactly do you think you're doing? You understand? Because I was going to say to him, yo, dude, she don't want you. She don't freaking want you, my youth. You understand? That's what I was going to say to him. I was going to say, dude, she don't freaking want you. But this dude was so desperate to be in her good graces that he basically stepped in front of me like he wanted to fight me. And I'm like, I know you can't fight me. I know for a fact you can't fight me. Not only was I at the time in the gym pumping 170 every other day, having a routine workout, you understand? Building up my body and stuff. I am an ex fighter, right? And ex fighters still can fight to a certain degree. I'm like, dude, if you step to me certain way, I'm just gonna knock you out and just, it is what it is at that point in time. In any case, I left. I walked out. I went to my first date with my wife. And we had an exemplary time. Right? I didn't even think I would have that much time. I, 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 By the time the date was over to, my ex was calling me and asking me if I wanted my keys. And I said to her, yes, of course I want my damn keys. And she's like, ah, oh, can you come to, can you come to chop and pick it up? I was like, come to chop where? You understand? I'm like, what you could have done is left my keys at a certain spot um, downstairs or at our mailbox. And I could have gotten our keys there. And she's like, well, you know, you need to come down to, I was like, yo, F this shit. 
F this shit. And I said, no, everything's fine. And them things there. By that time, the date was already over. So I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I head back home and stuff like that. And I said to her, say, you could have just left the door ajar so that I could have just get back in the apartment. You see me? She said, no, she not do that. I said, all right. Went back home, sat on the bus stop across from our apartment. And I basically pondered what I was going to do with my life. Because I'm like, yo, I met this wonderful woman. I don't want her to think that I want to like move in with her or nothing like that. Or I don't have a place to stay or and things like that. You understand? I'm, I'm just like kind of creating the groundwork so you understand like the danger I even put myself in with my wife. It's something very common, especially amongst immigrants. When we move, when we move to somewhere, this is like the, the most common situation right now. So, anyway, you know, fast forward. I got my keys from my apartment and stuff from my ex. And then within a month, you know, I moved out and I moved in with my wife. And, you know, the rest is history. Um, the reason why I say that's dangerous is because, like, if you move into an apartment where the woman is a soul, good thing that when I moved in, I was, be, I was able to go on the lease. So she couldn't just get up and basically kick me out of the apartment either. Because now I was on the lease. The last apartment. Um, I think I was on the lease. I'm not sure if I was on the lease. But this one I made sure. The woman made sure that I was on the lease. And all them things there. And that I was paying. And blah 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 blah. And whatever it is. So you know I was on the lease. So even if my ex and I had a problem. She couldn't kick me out. And put me on the street. For not being on that lease. You see me. So. In any case, right? This woman did a lot of dangerous things. You know, she didn't really vet the man. She didn't really, you know, my wife and I vetted each other very carefully, to be honest with you. You understand? Because I was I wasn't only seeing my wife and she knew and she knew that too. I was seeing two other women at the time. You understand? I was seeing two other ones. And she knew this. And plus, I was living with my ex. You understand? And let me tell you something. All the women that I was going out with at the time knew that I was seeing other women. I wasn't I wasn't dishonest about that. I was extremely honest. That's why I tell you. In my life, I don't get up and kiss everybody and, and sleep with everybody. It just, like, that's a, a sure way to get yourself in a lot of trouble. You know, so I was I was seeing my wife and other women, and um, then I made my I vetted my wife. Like I was like, okay, is this woman safe? Can I trust her? And and still, even though, even when I moved in with my wife, my passport stayed, and my documents stayed, and my emergency money stayed at my cousin's house in a safe so if anything too I would go to my cousin's house get my stuff and leave whatever it is that was material that I could leave I would leave it and just run if I needed to run to a relative or run back home to Jamaica is it me so you know even though you know my wife and I, I felt like, we both felt like, you know, I don't think, we both said that we don't believe that our relationship was rushed or anything because this is what both of us wanted, you know, and we're still married to this day, we're not perfect, we have our issues, we have our problems, we face adversities, many adversities together, we have four children together, you know. So, 
it turned out really, really good for both of us. You understand? And my wife, when she when when she does, she she says a lot of good things to me. She's like, "You're a great husband," and you know, I say the same thing about my wife as well. She's a great woman. She's a great cook. I love the fact. I don't care what nobody say. I love the fact that my wife can cook amazing meals. You understand? Now, um. To go back to the point that I was talking about in terms of, you know, robust women don't pull even guys like me. And I don't care what anybody says. I know I'm an attractive person. And the reason why I know I'm attractive is that there are many other ethnicities that not just my own ethnicities that is attracted to me. And that's a way of knowing that you're an attractive person, that when not only your own ethnicity is attracted to you, but everybody else is attracted to you. Am I using them for the for for the for the um for the standard? No, I'm not. No, I am not. I'm not using them as a standard, but I'm just saying that basically everybody is every ethnicity is practically tra- attracted to me. Even now, in my old age, I'm still getting spoken to certain ways. And I have to pretend like I don't know what people are saying to me. I have have to be pretending like I don't know that there are women that are basically flirting with me. I pretend. I pretend like I'm stupid. But in that woman's case, the man that she got, she don't usually pull a man like that. And so one of the main reasons why It was like a real horrible situation for her and why she stayed in it for so long was because she she basically knew that she would be looked on you know unfavorably not just amongst her friends but amongst people onlookers you understand she knows that she doesn't pull that type of guy she knows that you know those types of guys are type of guys like me don't go for women like that unless it's like a you know a desperate situation of just hitting it and quitting it smash and dash you understand serious situations like that you understand so these women basically come in late at night and then them leave early morning before nobody can spot them that's the type of situation or that's the type of woman that she would probably be And let me be honest about one thing though. I think, telling by her face all features, if she was a slim chick, she could have pulled a lot of guys. Because I looked at her facial features and I said to my wife, she's not unattractive. She's not unattractive. She's just robust. She's just too big. You understand? And that's something that's unattractive to a lot of men. And listen, man, and we need to differentiate between someone being thick and somebody being hefty you understand hefty is not attractive you understand thick is and there's a big difference we can't call everybody that is big and out of shape thick it's just not true so you know that's the thing about her still and her situation is just that she stayed in it because she knew she wouldn't be able to pull another guy like that. That's why she stayed in it for so long. And she felt unworthy and all those things and her, her own insecurities played against her. But anyway, just look out for the video tonight. This is the Hebrew Jamaican Coolie. Peace. I am out.